Hi, this is Jim Lee. I've had to split up the uh, final segment of this piece. Um, the files were too large. Um, I've already inked all the line work and now I am pouring ink directly on the page. Uh, I, I wouldn't really recommend this as a technique, uh, but if, you, if you're going to do this, uh, do it on a flat surface. Um, I'm also using my six-year-old's uh, watercolor brush. I think uh, it's made out of plastic. It's got a very short tip. Um, but, you know, you got to learn how to use your tools. Um, I couldn't use this to put any fine detail, but it fills in blacks, very large areas, very uh, nicely. And you can also use the very haggard tip to create some nice te uh, fur textures. Um, there's a whole science behind spotting blacks. Um, you can spot blacks to help frame your composition. Uh, you can spot blacks to show shadow, create form, create depth. Um, you can spot blacks to create um, separation between elements. Um, you know, for instance, uh, uh, in a black-white drawing, we don't have color, but you can use black to um, suggest color. Um, you can also use blacks to um, create texture. Um, by applying big pools of black, you can make things look shiny. By using dry brush techniques like I'm doing here, where you load the brush with just a, a little bit of ink, you can create um, wood textures, fur textures, um, that kind of thing. Um, I actually am now taking ink from the uh, other areas of the drawing to, to dry brush. Uh, in other words, uh, if you look at the chin of the monkey, it's filled with a lot of black. It's pretty wet there, but I'll take the brush and dip it into that area and then use it to create um, sort of these gray tones on his upper lip and his forehead. Uh, now I'm actually putting a little ink directly on the page uh, just to really beef up the contours, create some depth, really make some of these shapes uh, pop. And, you know, I'm not super uh, careful about where it goes. I think half the fun of inking, uh, especially over loose pencils, is sort of seeing where the drawing takes you. Um, there's a certain spontaneity in it uh, that I enjoy. Um, I, I hate inking tight pencils. It's, uh, I wouldn't call it tracing, but it, it feels like manual labor to me. Um, this, this is more like painting. This is, um, there's, there's a lot more challenge in this, and uh, it's a lot of fun to do every now and then. Um, you know, uh, sometimes I'll actually ink with uh, my fingers. I'll, um, usually when I ink a piece, I'll have all sorts of white out and indie ink dried all over my fingers. Um, Q-tips, Kleenex, sponges. Um, but uh, your basic tool should be a pen, a brush, ink, and a whiteout. Um, now I'm taking the pen and going back in and creating uh, gradients, meaning I'm going from areas of black. Um, well, right now I'm filling in the gaps between the teeth, but pretty soon I'll be putting detail between from the areas that I've brushed in and the white areas. And, and so I'm creating both um, uh, a gray tone, grayscale gray uh, gradient, and also a texture gradient in that I'm going from pure black areas that are heavily in shadow and pulling out of them suggesting uh, bits of fur, hair, wrinkles in the skin, um, and uh, it creates uh, creates form, it creates three-dimensionality, um, it tricks the eye into thinking that there's a lot more there. Uh, in fact, if I went in and drew every hair on this monkey's head and every wrinkle, it would look nice, I guess, but it would look very flat. And uh, I think I can get a more powerful image by um, laying down big chunks of black, contrasting against large chunks of white, and then using um, finer tools like, like this pen to draw from the black into the white to create um, both texture and visual interest. So I'm going in and adding some detail around the eyes, 
you know, monkeys tend to be very wrinkled, so um, it's a lot of fun to go in and add that kind of uh, detail. In fact, I'm probably spending way too much time on this monkey. Uh, I should really concentrate on, on Jenny. Um, adding a little more detail to the rubble. Putting little dits and dats, and I'm creating texture um, on, on, on the material, and also adding details on the cargo pants and the belt. Um, everything should feel like it could possibly exist in real life um, and not look super generic. Here I'm drawing off camera, I'm tightening up the shadows underneath her neck. Um, and adding blacks into the Union Jack. Again, this is an example of using blacks to suggest color. Obviously, the areas I'm filling in are, are blue. Um, by adding these black values in there, um, getting separation from the white and red elements of the Union Jack, uh, and then at the same time, uh, suggesting uh, a blue color. And find stuff like this, I'll just fill in with the pen. Uh, if I had a nice number two brush, um, I could do the same thing with that. Uh, I'm not going to fill in the whole shirt with black because then it will sort of disappear into the blacks I've laid in behind her on the monkey head. So I'm really dropping a core shadow down the center of the shirt and to the left and right on, on her, on her, um, uh, to the left and right of her torso. It's white suggesting light reflecting off of her sides. And here we go, um, a little more detail. There's a lot I drew off panel to the right. Uh, I forgot, I forgot to uh, center the page under the camera. I apologize. Um, but now I'm going and beefing up some of the lines on the rubble, and then I, I'm going to go around the contours of her pants and her body, and drop in some just slightly thicker line weights again to create separation from the background, and also creates. Uh, again, more three-dimensional form. And um, there are certain areas you want to definitely hit, which is um, uh, underside there. Um, and now I'm adding some some you know cuts and wounds on her arms, suggesting she was in this fight. I mean, part of a drawing is that you're creating a story, uh, even if it's a single illustration. And... Uh, um, Part of the story is created by the fact that she's got this uh, pint of Guinness, that uh, she's got a couple cuts on her shoulders, and that there's this big monkey head that's smoking behind her. 